kind of information, though, would, would have to be shown to say, all right, we're going to go mucking about a congressional election here involving the state, the Speaker of the State House of Representatives? Well, I, I doubt they're mucking about, but, uh, you know, I, I think they're, they're making some very targeted decisions. Yes. Uh, and and every, every piece of information would be shared with Department of Justice and FBI headquarters. I mean, because, again, they are certainly sensitive in Washington especially, of uh, the ramifications of this. And they, the decision would not be made lightly uh, as, as to make the introduction of the agent and to, to put the money out there. Uh, again, it's, it's of great curiosity to me as well, just with all the money and how it ended up where it ended up. It's, it, 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 it would be vetted, but you know, public corruption investigations happen all the time. There are lots of them going on. They're a high priority at the Department of Justice. They don't always lead where maybe the government thinks they're going to lead. Also, Mike, what, what would you say from your experience, and it may be a hypothetical, but from your experience, what percentage of the case do you think we know at this point? In other words, do we know 20% of the story? Do we know 5% of the story? Do we know it is, is, or a higher percentage? There was an interesting paragraph in the affidavit, which uh, the agent mentioned that the information he's providing in this affidavit applies only to Mr. Braddock, and, and there's more information out there. That's pretty boilerplate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially in, yeah. in certain types of cases. But it's the first time I've seen it in a, in a, in a corruption case. Uh, I've seen it in drug cases and things like that. But it's, uh, again, I, I think there, there's more to the story, but uh, that's a gut instinct rather than based on any fact. It may be the, I mean, the lead agent, his background, my understanding, is drug cases primarily before he did this, so maybe that yeah, was a be. holdover. Yeah, generally you see those in affidavits just to make clear that, that you know, it's not necessarily the whole story. I, look, we obviously, there's obviously more that we don't know. The government's in probably the best position to answer those questions, and the government, for good reasons, isn't commenting at this point. You know, I would hope that they you know, potentially bring some definition as to at least the public officials involved. I, th I think in the first day of the, and Mike can refresh our memory, the first day of the Paul Sylvester case, uh, when Sylvester uh, pleaded or they took him in, uh, uh, that, that wasn't even 10% of the case, right? And that case kept going on and on and on and on. And, and Ben Andrews went to, went to prison in 2022, I think. Um, so uh, that was a long running case. And so that's what I'm asking. I, do we know 5% of the case? Where are we? And, and, Granted, you're retired, so I, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if I weren't retired and, and gave that up, it'd be a, diet, so, uh, it'd be a, a bigger problem. But uh, it, it's, it's going to be really interesting, obviously. It's a very intriguing case, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just out there. And I, one thing that, and Ross, I think you touched on it, is they will not bring this case forward until they're sure. And uh, they're going to go where the evidence leads them. We had spoken earlier about the Giordano case where it involved a wiretap, a, a year's worth of work, and on corruption matters, and it ends in three hours on a, you know, Giordano being involved in a, a sexual assault. Is there anything we can surmise from the fact that this uh, labor go-between um, became a cooperator, according to the affidavit, on April 26th, and then a month later there's an arrest made, which puts it into the public realm. So it seems they've made a decision that we can't keep it quiet and, and gather more evidence. So what does that tell? I think it tells that they were going to have to go out and do some overt interviews to make the case go any further. And once, especially in a case like this, once you start asking a few questions, especially of legislators on a certain issue, it's not, you know, every day that you get that knock on the door from an FBI agent, you know, on an issue like that. So they, they probably, you know, it was a tact I'm sure it was a tactical decision where they had to make a decision. Uh, if we're going to do these interviews, it's going to be out there. So let, let's, you know, make it move forward in, simultaneously. We only have about two minutes left, but I wanted to end with, um, because everybody here has experience either covering politics or being involved in politics. And a lot of people on the street over the past few days have, you know, that I've, come up with um, have been cynical and said, well, I'm not surprised and, you know, it's just the latest. And, and I'm wondering, do you think that they have um, reason to be depressed <laughs> about this situation in Connecticut? Well, look, I, I think that, you know, 
there's still a lot we have to learn about this case. And for those of us who follow politics closely, there's so many outstanding questions that don't seem to make sense mm -hmm. with what we understand about Chris Donovan's record and what he's done for the people of Connecticut that many of us are still puzzled about what this is all about at the end of the day. Or just about politics in general. Well, look, it's fun to, it's fun to beat up on politicians, but the reality is uh, I'd say 99% yeah. of the folks who are involved in politics are involved for the right reasons. They want to make government work. They want to move the, make people's lives better. And I think that's just the reality. Those are the folks that we, you know, deal with every day virtually. Mm -hmm. So I think people can always be cynical because there's always some, some folks who cause that. But the most, most political folks, most government officials are trying to do the right thing. Right. Yeah, that's, that's certainly my experience. And, and my suggestion is folks should wait to jump to conclusions. You know, wait to see what else comes out. Mm -hmm. Mike? Even though I've been beaten down by 22 <laughs> years in the FBI of cynicism, I, I agree that, uh, you know, 99% of the public officials I've dealt with over the years are there for the right reasons. Uh, but it, it's still, you know, again, I used to be introduced as the special agent from Corrupticate when I used to mm -hmm. do seminars, uh, you know, FBI seminars. So it, it can, uh, you know, it, it makes you question just uh, sometimes some of, the, some of the, the issues out there. Yeah, yeah. And you guys are going to keep asking questions, you too. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it's plenty of reasons to be cynical, but I'm not sure corruption is the main one in Connecticut. Right. <laughs> yeah, and there's, there's, there's been so many cases, I mean, just, just in the state legislature, uh, you know, Ernie Newton that we mentioned, Jim O'Rourke, at, at different levels, John Rowland, Paul Sylvester, uh, Joe Gannam, there's, there's all been at different levels, but uh, I think one of the things that we've learned from it is, is very often um, the onion needs to be peeled a little bit more, and uh, I don't think we know all the uh, answers in this case. Great. I appreciate this has been a great panel. I appreciate you all being here. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Don't forget, if you missed something here on The Real Story, you can now watch it online by going to ctnow.com. You can also catch us on YouTube. And don't forget that this Thursday, we host the GOP Senate debate featuring Chris Shays and Linda McMahon. That's this Thursday at noon. We'll be streaming that live from UConn. It'll also be shown at 7 p.m. right here on Fox Thursday night. Thanks for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. We'll see you here again next week.